he's got a, a bandage on here and he needs cold applied to that. You go ahead and get your cold pack. Two different types of cold pack that you can use this depending on what your facility uses. You can get these kind and all you would do is snap to break it, loosen it up and it starts getting cold. And on these it says apply this side to your desired area. Now my area is covered already with this wrap, but if it wasn't, I'd make sure I'd get something like a washcloth or a um, pillowcase, just something so that the plastic isn't right on it. But like I said, he's got the wrap, so I can go ahead and apply the coal. So I've got the cold on there. With this other type of cold compress, you would open it up. It opens up like this. And what I'm going to do is fill ice in there. So I go to the ice machine, fill the ice up. The thing is you don't want to get the ice all the way to the top. So just um, put it about a little more than three-fourths the way up. Close it again, put it on. Now this has got the covering over it, so that would act like a protectant. And then you could go ahead and put the cold compress on wherever you need it to be on. The important thing with cold compresses is to make sure that you come back and check the integrity of the skin at least every hour. Check to make sure that the skin isn't getting white or, um, or too cold. Check the pulses. Make sure the pulses are okay. Your CMS, your color, motion, and sensation. So like I said, make sure it's not getting white. Make sure he has a good pulse. You could go ahead and check capillary refill. Make sure he can move his hand okay, that it's not doing that. Make sure that he has sensation, you know, make sure he can feel. If you're, you know, lightly pinching, he's able to feel. That's just your CMS check and do that every hour while you have that cold compress on or even afterwards just to make sure that the um, wound is healing correctly. So that would be cold. Hot is when we use an aqua K pad. An aqua K pad is just a plastic, and I've got it covered in a pillowcase. But it's just plastic, but it's got heat going through it. So again, you don't want that directly on the skin. So I've got a pillowcase over it. I've got it on the affected area. I make sure that my machine is correctly filled. There's a line here. You want to make sure that the water, which you'll be using distilled water in this machine, is up to the line because you don't want it to go dry. So you check that first. If it needs more, there's just a cap. You open up the cap and you put your water in there that you need. Everything is okay. And then you just go ahead and turn it on. And they are set so that it doesn't get too hot, but you still need to come in every hour and again, check the CMS. Make sure that the skin isn't getting too red. Where with the cold, you didn't want it to get white. You don't want this to get too red. One uh, good example that you use on Aqua K is if an IV has gone bad, if you get phlebitis from an IV, and you want to apply heat to it. That's when you could be using this. But again, check the color, the motion, the sensation, the same way you did for the cold. Make sure you're doing it for the hot also. Your Mosby this goes into hot and cold, and they have a lot of good information on all of this. Um, the last thing I just wanted to show you is your SCDs, sequential compression devices. You see these a lot in um, post-operative floors because the purpose of these is to put them on the patient and these will go above the knee, they're more like thigh high. They promote circulation. That's why it's very important for your patient after, after surgery because they're not up and around like they normally would be. So a lot of times the physician will order these until the patient is ambulatory and ambulating frequently. So just to show you what they're like, they're just on here. Make sure you get the knee joint where there's no, the opening and they just Velcro on. This part here would go to the machine and either the machine usually is just at the end of the bed. So it just hooks up to the tubes, you turn the machine on and what happens is that it just compresses the leg and then it releases. It compresses the leg and then it releases, promoting the circulation. There again, you could continue to check circulation even with these on. Check those pedal pulses. Make sure you still got good pedal pulses. They're able to move their foot. You can check capillary refill, make sure there's sensation. 
they're always ordered or more than likely ordered for the lower extremities. They can have knee highs or thigh high in length. And I think that pretty much is, a, like I said, a very brief and quick overview of these different miscellaneous things that we wanted you to know on. So make sure you review about your hot and cold in different um, um, theory that's applied to it and when you would use it. Review over your SCDs, review over the different types of wraps and make sure you know how to do each of the wraps. And that ends it for this skill.